so good morning everyone and uh, welcome back to the new class in the previous class we were discussing about the uh, different uh, how to design the mos inverter circuits and there some uh, like we tried to design something uh, related to the mos circuits and uh, we come up with some like uh, how the mos inverter works and what are the different states if i am changing the input from zero to some uh, vdd and then accordingly how the output is going to be, uh, how the output is going to be changed and also we saw like uh, if i am changing the input and accordingly if there is some change in the output so both the transistors like load transistor and the driver transistors must act, act differently in uh, all the stages okay so we also saw like uh, what are the different operating conditions uh, in each region of operation of both the transistors either it is in the load side or it is in the driver side so this was the basic fundamental of the cmos inverter ah yes of course we, uh, in detail we will try to see how uh, the performance of the cmos inverter is going to be affected if i am going to change the transistor sizing if i am going to change the vdd if i am going to change some other parameters like capacitances so uh, all these things uh, we will discuss in this particular module or in this particular ppt okay uh, in the previous lecture we just discussed like how the mosfet uh, mos based inverter looks like or how cmos inverter looks like and what are the different components how it can be activated and deactivated that's it but in detail we will see in this particular lecture uh, what are the different factors that are associated with the performance of the circuits okay so to continue with this uh, like we will try to design uh, various kind of uh, mos based inverters and those mos based inverter uh, like we already know that there are uh, two things uh, in the mos inverter or c mos based inverter one is the load and the second one is driver okay so if somehow we can try to draw the diagram then the it will be something like this Okay, so this is a simple diagram which we have already studied, and uh, we know what are the different importance of all these components. So we have two kind of things like load and driver. Uh, but if we talk about the uh, uh, the CMOS based structure or MOSFET based structure, it is really important to uh, understand what is the importance of this load and what is the importance of this driver. So basically. Uh, whatever logic we will receive at the output side that completely depends on whether the load capacitance CL is charged or discharged. So if the CL or the load capacitance or the output capacitance is charged, completely charged, so we'll, we will consider that the output is at logic high. And if it is completely discharged, in that case, we will consider it is logic low. Okay, so the based on the charging and discharging, we, we generally consider uh, the logic is high or low. But at the same time, one more thing that need to be considered is, suppose initially the load capacitance is at logic zero. Okay, let us assume the V out is initially at logic zero. Okay, and if it is at logic zero, and I want to make this CL to the VDD or equivalent to VDD. In that case, why, what I need to do? I need to simply charge this load capacitance. And we know that if I have to charge this load capacitance, in that case, what we can do? We need to simply activate this load uh, load block. So, so the low, if the load block is activated, in that case, it will get path to charge from this load. Okay, 
so the charging of this load capacitance is done by this load capacitor a uh, load uh, load block and uh, uh, this is how we can charge it so if load is activated this vdd will be transferred to this cl and that will be charged so this uh, zero can be transferred to the vdd similarly if the output let us assume initially the output is at vdd okay if output is at vdd and i want to discharge it so this driver transition driver uh, uh, block is responsible to discharge it so what we say this load transistor is responsible to make the or to pull up the load capacitance value whatever the value we have that load is responsible to pull, pull up the value like initially it was zero and by using this load block we are pulling up the logic level at the output side so we call this load block as a pull up network because this pull up network is nothing but this is the pulling up the logic level whatever we have initially we had the logic zero but after activating this load this load capacitance is going to be uh, uh, this load capacitance is going to be increase or it is charging and if it is charging what it means the output voltage will be pulled up okay and that is why we are calling it pull up network similarly because once this driver uh, block is activated uh, pull up means it will alter from uh, zero to one yes uh, uh, pull up simply means if it is uh, increasing the voltage from lower logic to somewhat higher logic it is not always necessary that it can completely charge with up to the vdd but even though if let us assume if the logic level is zero and if it is it is able to charge up to vdd by two so again this is acting as a pull up network so pull up means simply changing the logic voltage from lower to somewhat higher this somewhat can be the maximum this somewhat can be some of the moderate or it can be somewhat minimum okay but if it is increasing then we can say it is a pull up one okay similarly the pull down network is basically uh, pulling down so initially what we expect we are expecting that initially the vdd is at uh, like output is at vdd and if the driver is uh, activated then this output voltage whatever the load capacitance has stored like this much of voltage we have that will be discharged through this uh, driver so that will pull down so this will pull down the from vdd to ground okay so that is why we call it the pull down network okay so later on we will not talk about the uh, load and driver we will simply talk about the pull up network and the pull down network so this should this you should know uh, what is the importance of pull up and pull down network now one very important thing that needs to be considered like uh, we always uh, we, we know that the pull up network and the pull down network can be anything like we can make the pull up network and pull down network by any of the transistor like either it could be the pmos or it could be nmos or it could be an enhancement or it could be depletion but here in this particular section we will try to see if somehow we are changing the type of the transistor in place of load or in place of driver then what will happen okay so uh, based on these combinations like different types of transistor uh, the different types of MOS based inverter we can classify. So the first kind of the inverter is the resistive load inverter. What it means? It means that whatever the load we have, we will not put any of the transistor here in place of load. Instead, we will put some resistance. Okay. So if I have connected some resistor uh, and the, the, the pull down is just like uh, based on the MOSFET. So this kind of inverter, we call it the resistive load inverter. How it looks like, how it behaves, we will discuss later on. Okay. So the simple thing is like, if I'm replacing this load by a simple resistance and a driver is replaced with some MOSFET, then we call it the resistive load inverter. Okay. Second could be like enhancement load inverter. Enhancement load inverter means if in place of load block, if I am using enhancement type of MOSFET, then we call it the enhancement load inverter. 
this enhancement uh, load inverter ca can be either pmos or in uh, or nmos so we will also see if i am uh, uh, replacing this load by the enhancement type of mosfet okay so the how this circuit will be have so basically to overcome some of the problem of resistive load inverter we need to go for the enhancement type okay and but again the enhancement type uh, enhancement load inverter may also have some problems what those problems are i will discuss in detail but the thing is this enhancement load inverter can be of two type either it could be the pmos or it could be the nmos so we will also try to see if in place of load i have i have replaced it with the enhancement type type nmos then how the behavior will be and in case i am replacing this with uh, enhancement type pmos then how the behavior will be so we will try to see and we will we will try to compare different uh, characteristics based on this load change okay so this is one of the possibility second possibility could be the pseudo nmos inverter pseudo nmos inverter means i am assuming that uh, till now uh, what i am assuming i am assuming that this the load and the driver are controlled with the same input but if somehow i can make one of the block always in turn on state okay there could be like pseudo nmos and pseudo pmos inverter is also possible so we will try to see how pseudo so let me write it here so pseudo pmos inverter is also possible so uh, uh, so we will see how we can design the pseudo pmos inverter and how uh, pseudo nmos inverter okay pseudo nmos inverter means one of the either load or the driver is always on so if it is always on then how the behavior will be so we will try to see it on this one next one is the depletion load inverter so uh, just like we have calculate we have considered the enhancement type mosfet for the load similarly we can consider the depletion type of mosfet as a load okay and we will try to see how the behavior will be and the last one will be the complementary mos inverter means whatever the load we have the the driver will be complementary to that one like if the load is made of the pmos transistor then the driver will be made of the nmos transistor and vice versa okay so we will uh, uh, we will try to design a cmos based inverter as well which is the complementary in nature like load and the drivers are complementary in nature okay so this is the sum of the uh, category on which we will try to discuss the different mos inverters so this is really very important to understand how do we decide what kind of the devices should be on the load side or what kind of devices should be on driver side so that we can have the maximum or better performance in terms of power dissipation in terms of noise margin in terms of the uh, in terms of the uh, delay so this is really important that we should understand okay so this is all about the mos inverter but the Hello, important... sir. yeah please sir in resistive load inverter the driver is uh, resistance what about load no no driver driver is not resistance load is resistance uh, i have already uh, acha you are you are you are saying like there could be one possibility resistive driver inverter right uh, no no sir uh... huh. Resistive load, load one. Resistance and driver is a enhancement type or normal uh, depletion. Yeah, there there could be any possibility. Like, see, uh, uh, if I am talking about the resistive load inverter, uh, and just what I'm uh, what I'm doing here, I'm just replacing this load by the resistance. Now we have the four possibility to make the driver. This driver can be of enhancement NMOS, enhancement PMOS, depletion NMOS, and depletion PMOS. So there could be four possibility, and we will try to see how this inverter is behaving uh, considering all these four possible combinations. Okay, so the combination could be anything, but we need to check how the behavior is. Okay, so it is not like we need to keep. Uh, it is not compulsory to keep only enhancement at the driver side. Okay, you can keep anything, but that that is really very important to consider what is the what is our requirement like uh, if by considering the enhancement driver might be the performance could be uh, different uh, as compared to the uh, depletion one so we need to check which kind of transistor we need to put 
So I will make all these possible combinations, whatever we have, like for the resistive load, we can have the four possible combination. Similarly for enhancement load, we can have the other combinations. So we will try to check all these possible combinations and we will see which of the possible combination is very good for the circuit designers. Okay, you got the answer? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So um, here we can have the five different variant of the inverters. But the important thing is, if I am considering this uh, the inverter analysis, what are the major parameters that are really important to consider? So some of the parameters, let me write here, that are really important to consider. The first parameter is the delay, okay, or propagation delay. So we need to check the propagation delay of the circuit, how it is behaving in terms of the performance, in terms of the speed. Second parameter that is really important is the power dissipation. Okay, so power dissipation is also one of the par parameter that we will analyze for all the circuits. Next, we will talk about the noise margin. Okay, so how the noise margin is and how it is changing. And the fourth and an important parameter is the area calculation or cost calculation. Okay, so area is also equally important in the uh, uh, circuit designing side. Okay, so these are the four important parameters that we will discuss. So before going into the explanation of all these kind of inverters, let us discuss all these parameters one by one, like propagation de delay, how we calculate the propagation delay and how it is important and how we can consider uh, other things. Similarly, we will talk about the power dissipation, noise margin and area. And then later on, we will start with the basic things. But before going into the detail, uh, like what you asked the question, uh, this partially uh, your answer, uh, I, I will give you the uh, answer in the next slide. Like you asked, like uh, if I have the resistive load inverter, which kind of transistor should be in place of driver? Either it should be enhancement or it should be the uh, depletion. Okay. Uh, or if it is enhancement, then it will be, whether it will be the PMOS or it will be NMOS. So the partially your answer will be, uh, your question will be answered in the next slide, okay? So what that next slide is, let us try to consider here. So here, before we discuss about the different configuration of the inverter, let us try to discuss if I have the MOSFET, either it is PMOS or it is the NMOS, uh, then how this MOSFET uh, is acting as a switch if I am considering it for the pull-up or I'm considering it for the pull-down network, okay? Pull up and pull down means let, let me, uh, because we already know one very important thing. Suppose I have a CMOS inverter, which, uh, which looks like this. Okay. We know this, uh, the CMOS in inverter is looks like this only. And here, if we see the PMOS transistor is placed at the load side and the NMOS transistor is placed at the driver side. Okay. Uh, and this is, let us assume this is the input. This is the output. And this is the VDD. Okay, so this is a simple structure of the CMOS inverter. This is the load. This is the driver. Okay, and if we see this one, in the load we have placed the PMOS transistor and in driver we have placed the NMOS transistor. But what happens, some, you may ask one question. What happens if we try to interchange these logics? Like if I have used this NMOS transistor as a load and the PMOS transistor as a driver, then what will happen? How the circuit will behave? Okay, so let us try to discuss very important thing, which is, uh, which need to be discussed. Okay, so first let us talk about pulling up a node using NMOS and the PMOS switches. What I'm saying, I'm saying that if the load capacitance or the output voltage is at logic zero, consider the output voltage is lo at logic zero. So that output voltage can be pulled up by two way, either by the NMOS transistor I, or by the PMOS transistor. Okay, so there are two possibilities. Like what, what I need to do, if I have to make, uh, I have to pull up the uh, logic from zero to high, 
in that case i just need to activate the load so if i have activated the load and if the load is uh, is perfectly working what it means the vdd will be transferred to the output that's it so this is the role of the uh, the uh, the load side okay so So, uh, uh, so let us try to see what happens if I am changing this kind of logics, uh, like either PMOS or NMOS transistors. Okay. So here we have two possible combinations. Suppose uh, uh, this load CL is charged, okay, uh, up to the uh, like it, it is discharged to zero zero volt, and I am just pulling up the CL. by using either by the pmos transistor or by nmos transistor okay so what i have to do i have to just simply replace like you can see this uh, uh, right most figure here uh, the load is made by the pmos transistor okay and now what i need to do i just simply need to replace it by the either nmos transistor or the pmos transistor so we can see these two figures in the black color okay but we also know that if i have to activate this nmos transistor this gate must be connected to the vdd because uh, the uh, this nmos transistor is activated if the vdd is uh, if if the gate is at high potential similarly to activate the pmos transistor what i need to do i simply need to connect the gate terminal to the uh, low logic okay here this is the gate here this is the uh, drain terminal and here this is the source terminal similarly if we talk about the this one this is the gate terminal this is the source terminal and this is the drain terminal okay so this is how it looks like now what happens if i am using the uh, nmos transistor in the first figure if i am using the nmos transistor as a load in that case what i need to do i need to simply connect the gate terminal to the vdd okay if the vdd is uh, if gate is vdd so the vgs if you see here v g s will be initially what will be vgs vg is the vdd and this source voltage because this cl is initially uh, connected to the it is it initially zero so the vs will be zero so the vgs will be nothing it is like the vdd let me repeat it again if i have to pulling it up so what i need to consider i need to consider like the cl should be zero I, like this uh, the the v output should be zero if the v output is zero so the vs will become zero okay and if vs is zero so vgs is uh, uh, in this one is nothing but this is equal to vdd and we know that to turn on the uh, nmos transistor the vgs must be greater than the vth okay this is the condition like vgs must be greater than vth okay vgs must be greater than or is equal to vth so that the device will be in the on state if and if i can see here this vgs is equal to vdd and if i am considering the vdd is greater than vts so this device will be in the on state and if this device is in on state this vdd will start transferring towards to the uh, this load capacitor c okay so this capacitor will start charging but what happens once this uh, capacitor start charging so uh, the important thing is like the gate to source potential difference must be greater than vth okay so once this load capacitance reaches up to vdd minus vth okay once this load capacitance reaches up, uh, uh, this output voltage reaches up to vdd minus vth then what will be the vgs let us see the vgs will be nothing like vg is here like vdd and the vs is vdd minus vth so vgs will be is equal to vth okay so at that time vgs will become vth and if further if i am charging this output voltage this condition will not be satisfied whatever we have so beyond this voltage this capacitor 
cannot be charged if I am charging it through the NMOS transistor. Okay, let me repeat it again what I am saying. Let us first consider initially CL is equal to zero. Okay, so this V out is equal to zero. And if the V out is equal to zero, so this Vs will become zero. And if Vs is zero and Vg I have connected to the VDD, what it means the VGS will become the VDD. And if VGS is equal to VDD, this and most transistor will be in the on state. And if it is in the on state, this, this VDD, whatever the VDD over here, this VDD will be transferred to the uh, output voltage. Okay, here let us consider this is the V output. So this VDD will be transferred to the V out. But, and this capacitor will start charging. Once this capacitor is uh, reach up to the VDD minus VTH, in that case, what I will observe, the VGS will be, VGS is equal to, uh, here VG is VDD minus uh, VS. So VS is VDD and here minus, then it will become the plus. So it will be become VTH, okay? So the VDD, so VGS is equal to, the condition will become like VGS is equal to VTH. For If I further increase this one, so this VTH will, will like, uh, it will be more. Uh, so what will happen after this voltage, this transistor will be in the off state because this VGS will become less than the threshold voltage. And if the VGS will become less than threshold voltage, this NMOS transistor will be in on state, uh, off state and it cannot further charge this load capacitance beyond this VDD minus VTH. So the important observation here is if I am considering the NMOS transistor in place of load, I cannot get maximum swing, which is the VDD. We can get some, some threshold voltage drop at the output. So the maximum VDD or maximum pull up is not possible if I'm considering the NMOS transistor in place of load. Okay, so this is one of the very important thing. Okay, and if the swing, like the maximum voltage will reduce, so the, uh, the, the subsequently noise margin will also reduce. Okay, so the noise margin will be reduced. So uh, what it means? It means that the NMOS transistor cannot pass the complete high. This is not uh, possible to, to pass the maximum VDD to the output. So that is why we call the NMOS transistor as a weak high. Weak high means it cannot transfer the high with the maximum value. There will be some drop. That is why we are calling NMOS transistor is a weak high. So this, this slide is really very, uh, is very important. That is important to discuss all other kind of inverter configurations. Okay. So uh, the NMOS is the weak high. Now let us try to discuss the second case, like, yeah. So here the v, it will the output will be transferred from zero to VDD minus VTH N. Now let us talk about the second figure here. Okay, what happens? Uh, because we know that to turn on this uh, PMOS transistor, I need to connect the gate terminal to the grounded. Okay, so if I have connected to the gate ter terminal to the ground, so this device will be in the on state. In, in initially, I am assuming that this. Uh, uh, output voltage is uh, zero. Okay, if output voltage is zero, I'm just want I just wanted to charge it through the uh, PMOS transistor. Now, see here, this gate voltage is the zero. This source voltage is the VDD. Okay, so if you see here, the VGS is nothing but it is the minus VDD. Okay, and we know that. To make this PMOS transistor turn on, the VGS must be less than or is equal to VTH. Why it is so? Because uh, the threshold voltage is negative. Okay, so the threshold voltage for the PMOS transistor is negative. If I am talking about the magnitude, then the equation will be something like this: VGS or magnitude of VGS. Uh, must be greater than is equal to magnitude of VTS. So this, this we can put, but uh, for better understanding, uh, the to turn on this device, VGS must be less than is equal to VTS. 
Okay. So now if we see here, the VGS is equal to V minus VDD, which is always less than the VTS because the VTS is always less than uh, the magnitude of VTS. Let us assume it is minus 0.2 volt. So, and the VDD is equal to 0.8 volt. So the 0.8 is always less than minus 0.2. Okay. So what it means, it means that this PMOS transistor will always be in on state because the VGS is not going to be changed based on whatever the potential is there at the CL side. Even though this load transistor is utilized to charge this one, this is not going to affect based on the charging. Okay, because this VGS will always be constant. Okay, because I have connected the gate terminal to the ground and the source terminal to VDD. So the VGS will always be minus VDD. And this device will always be in on state. So this output can completely charge from zero to VDD. So we can charge it from zero to VDD completely. And if it is like this, what it means? the the pmos transistor is a strong high okay so the pmos transistor is a strong high so the what what conclusion we can draw from here is we can draw from here like the nmos transistor is the weak high and the pmos transistor is the strong high so if I want to have a maximum noise margin or maximum charging of the load capacitance, in that case, I need to use the uh, PMOS transistor in place of load. Uh, it is not recommended to the NMOS transistor uh, should, uh, should be used in place of load. So this is important. Now let us talk about the other possibility. Like if I have already charged the output voltage and I want to discharge it, pulling down it, so uh, either via the NMOS transistor or the PMOS transistor. So let us try to see what are the situation and how it can act. Okay, so here I have the two possible combinations. Uh, one is based on the PMOS transistor and, and another one is based on the NMOS transistor. Okay, so let us try to understand how it is working. Uh, this terminal is nothing but, uh, sorry, this terminal is nothing but, this is the uh, gate terminal and gate is connected to the VDD, okay, and uh, because this is the NMOS transistor, so, so the higher, higher potential will be towards to the drain side and the lower will be towards to the source side. Similarly, here we will have uh, gate terminal is here, this one is the source terminal and this is the drain terminal. Okay, now let us try to understand again. If you see here, in the first case, the VGS here, I can see VGS is, is equal to VDD minus zero, or it will be like VDD. So if you see here, uh, if the CL is charged to VDD, for example, CL is charged to VDD, and if I have provided like uh, the gate voltage of this PMOS uh, NMOS transistor to VDD. So the VGS will become VDD. And if the condition is like this, this NMOS transistor will be in on state. Okay. And if it is on state, so this output voltage will be connected to the ground and this load capacitance will discharge through this NMOS transistor. Okay. So initially it was at VDD, but it will discharge to completely zero because this condition will never will uh, fail. You will get always this condition like VGS, minus, uh, VGS is equal to VDD. And if it is like this, this transistor will always be in on state until unless we will not remove this gate voltage. Okay. So if the gate is, yeah, please. Uh, so why didn't you connect it CL to source? Because in the above uh, figure, we have connected CL to source. Uh, in ever figure for the PMOS transistor, right? Uh, no, sir. NMOS transistor. No, because see, the direction of current flow is from the drain to source in the NMOS transistor and the vice versa for the PMOS transistor. So, uh, because uh, the, the uh, output voltage it is at high potential and the source is at the lower, like this source terminal is the at lower potential. So what we need to do, we need to always make the potential difference like this, that the drain in the NMOS transistor should be at higher potential because the direction of current flow. Okay. 
so if you will do like this current flow flow will be in opposite direction so it is not possible yeah let me explain your let, let me answer your question so if the condition is like this source drain drain and source so the what will happen the current will so in the current from the uh, here we have the vdd so i am expecting that the current should flow from vdd to ground side this is the expectation and if i have the pmos transistor so the current will be from the source to drain and if i have the nmos transistor the current flow will be from the drain to source if i change it to the source and drain then the current will be in this direction which is not possible because uh, i need to follow like vdd to ground the current should be uh, should start from the vdd and that should uh, finish at the ground side only so if i will interchange the source and drain potential uh, drain terminal uh, the equation will be something like this which is not true okay so this is completely based on the direction of current flow you got the answer uh, sir uh, like uh, ye jo above equation hai uh, hmm. this uh, like this above figure nmos hmm. type uh, hmm. uh, so uh, let us assume it is charged completely and i want to make it zero is it hmm. possible to do that uh you want to make it yeah that is why i am still explaining it right so here it is uh, in the below figure just uh, uh, if it is charged to vdd here it is, it has been charged to vdd and i am just making it to the zero and that is what i am explaining so please let me complete this then you can ask the question if it is any of the question is unanswered okay so okay fine so here uh, but uh, so the important thing is uh, like uh your question or your doubt could be like uh, how we are deciding where i need to put the drain terminal and where i need to put the source terminal because the mosfet is a symmetrical device okay so i uh, we can interchange like source and drain but what should be the where, where i need to put the source and where i need to put the drain so this is completely depends on where the potential higher potential is there so higher potential is always placed to the drain side in the nmos transistor and the lower potential is connected to the source side in the nmos transistor and vice versa for the pmos transistor okay so let me explain this one because i have connected this uh, a gate terminal to the vdd so the this vg is equal to vdd and source is connected to the ground so vgs will become vdd and vgs is equal to if the vgs is equal to vdd which is always greater than the threshold voltage so if it is like that this nmos transistor will always be in on state okay now if it is in on state this will get the complete path to discharge up to the logic zero like initially it was charged to vdd and if this uh, uh, nmos transistor is activated so this vdd will be discharged through through this path like this this will be the path to discharge through this transistor only and that will completely be discharged to zero because the charging and discharging voltage will not affect the activation of this nmos transistor because this nmos transistor the vgs across this nmos transistor will always be vdd it does not depends what is the potential at the load capacitance okay so it will completely discharge what it means it means that nmos transistor is utilized to Uh, uh, uh to discharge the load capacitance completely so we can say that the nmos transistor is a strong low a strong low means it can make the logic low uh, to the extreme whatever it has like the zero potential there is no threshold voltage drop across it okay so this can be uh, utilized as a strong low uh, kind of things now let us try to explain the fourth figure and then we can summarize few things which are important if i have connected uh, because i need to turn on this uh, pmos transistor so i need to connect it to the vdd okay so if i have connected something like this and if the initially output voltage is vdd so let us assume the output voltage is equal to vdd initially because i just wanted to pull down it here okay so here if we see vgs will be vg is equal to 0 volt and s is like uh, uh, vdd here so it will be like minus vdd okay minus vdd now what will happen 
minus VDD, and that is completely satisfying the condition to turn on this device. So this device will be in the on state. Now this capacitor will discharge. Okay, this capacitor will start discharging. But once it reaches to the uh, VDD minus VTH, uh, VTP, uh, VTH of this PMOS transistor, like this condition, once it reaches to the VTA, VTP, okay, this condition will not be satisfied. So further, if the condition is not satisfied, this device will be in, becomes in the off state and the, the minimum voltage that can be observed uh, for the low logic or after pulling down, that will be equivalent to the threshold voltage of the PMOS transistor. Okay, so it can discharge up to the threshold voltage of the PMOS transistor. So the, we cannot make uh, the logic completely low if I am considering the PMOS transistor as a driver. Okay, so we call it like the PMOS transistor is nothing but this is the weak low. Okay, so we have these four possible combinations. One is like the NMOS transistor is the weak high but a strong, uh, uh, a strong low and the PMOS transistor is the strong high and the weak low. What it means? It means that if I am using the NMOS transistor in the driver side, it will work perfectly. And, but uh, the vice versa is not possible. And similarly for the PMOS transistor. Now you can ask your question. Is your doubt clear or I need to explain it again? Uh, sir, let us assume one case uh, in which I am considering the first circuit, uh, first diagram in the corner. So, mm -hmm. uh, NMOS wala method. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yes. usme, let us assume that I have charged my capacitor to VDD out of whatever it is getting charged. Yes. And yes. I want to make it zero, like pull down. I want to pull it down to zero. What I will do then? Uh, see, so uh, in the case, like you are considering the figure one. Like you are considering like this CL is charged to VDD and now you want to pull it down, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So the pulling down is done by the driver side. So that is what the second figure is like the bottom, the left one is bottom left is nothing, but that is the same for the pulling down. So if your output voltage is charged to here, if your output voltage is charged to VDD and you're pulling down by the NMOS transistor only. So these are the two possibilities. Either you can use the NMOS or you can use the PMOS. So if I'm using the NMOS transistor, so this will be the combination, whatever I explained you. So, and similarly for the N a PMOS transistor. So if it is charged to VDD, I need to discharge it. And for the discharging, I need to utilize the driver side. Okay, so driver will be needed and driver is connected between the V output and the grounded. So what I have done, this, this is the V output and this is the grounded and this is the transistor, which is the driver one. So this is what we have already done it. And this is how it is discharging. So I need to check this condition, VGS is called uh, uh, VGS voltage. And we need to check whether this device is in the on state or not. And if it is in the on state, this will completely discharge or this will the pulling down. Yes, sir. Yes, I understood. Sir, like he, Matlab, uh... In inverter, like in real circuit, what I will use is uh, that second circuit and that. Yes, yes, yes. So the same yeah. transistor cannot be used to charge and discharge both. Like you need to interchange. Like for the charging, we need to use the load, and for the discharging, you need to go for the driver side. You got the answer? Yes, yes. My doubt is clear. Fine. So this is what uh, the important summary about this uh, particular slide is. Uh, uh, important thing is like. Uh, what do you, we understand? We understand that if I am using the NMOS transistor in the load side, then this will give some problem. Like it cannot be charged up to VDD. So the noise margin will be reduced. Similarly, if I'm using the PMOS transistor uh, towards the driver side, so it cannot discharge the capacitor completely. So again, this will reduce the noise margin because the noise margin depends on the maximum swing, whatever we have. So the maximum swing decides what is the noise margin. Okay, and if it is like this, uh, 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 the PMOS transistor in the, in, uh, in the pull down and the NMOS transistor is in, uh, pull up network is not recommended. Whereas, because the PMOS transistor is completely is, is uh, uh, responsible to completely charge the output voltage. So we can recommend the PMOS transistor should be 
in the load side and similarly the end wash transistor in the uh, driver side so that you can discharge the output capacitor completely so this is really very important so the recommended circuits are this one so this one is the recommended one and this one is the recommended configuration so and these two configurations are not recommended if i have uh, the reservation on the noise margin okay so if i have to consider the noise margin the first and the fourth circuits are the first and fourth combinations are not recommended okay so this is how the mosfet act as a switch now uh, uh, your doubt will be clear like someone asked a uh, few minutes back like uh, what will be the driver whether it will be enhancement or it will be the depletion or it will be the pmos or it will be nmos so now after discussion uh, in this particular sl slide you may have some idea like which kind of transistor i need to put in the pull, pull up network or the pull down network so the 50% you can decide immediately uh, after this much discussion okay so let me write uh, one summary uh, well, let me change the color pmos is a strong high weak low and the nmos is a strong low weak so this is really very important uh, point that you should know right these are really important so you if you want to uh, have a maximum swing in that case you need to use like this one okay so we have uh, so we cannot go for the next point because we have only 2 minutes so yeah, so in, in case anyone has any doubt, you can ask the question. So yeah, next one is propagation relay that will take to, uh, at least 10 minute time and we don't have that much of time. So uh, I'm just giving two minute time to think about any, any doubt, uh, any, any of the things which you want to explain uh, or you want to clear the doubt so, so that we can discuss those things. Sir, load is always used for charging and driver for discharging uh, for all circuit or only for... Yes, yes. Load is nothing but uh, just uh, uh, load uh, Load is to charge and a driver is to discharge. And these two are the decision maker circuit, right? So uh, it is not like we need to replace the uh, driver by the load and vice versa. No, it's not like that. So the load is always used to charge. So for all circuit, right? Not only yeah, 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 yeah. Any kind, like any of the combination, any like whether it is resistive load or enhancement or uh, uh, depletion load, whatever it is, the the load is to charge, and that is nothing but this is the pull up network. Means, no, no, I'm asking whether it is, this is true only for uh, inverter based circuits or is no, no, no. It, it is true for all kind of circuits. Okay? This is true for all kind of circuits. Okay, sir. Okay, so uh, any other doubt you have? Uh, sir, I have one doubt. Like, uh, what are the techniques that are available? Like, if you want a, a strong high in NMOS or a strong uh, a low in PMOS, what techniques are available, sir? Yeah, so uh, there are some techniques yeah, that that will be discussed in later on. But uh, because you asked the question, let me ask. Uh, let me answer that question. So, if somehow, if you can increase this gate voltage. Okay, so uh, if you, you can increase this gate voltage by VTH, okay, so this will become like v, VDD plus VTH. So the maximum it can charge, like initially this VDD has been changed to VDD plus VTH and minus VTH, that will give equivalent to VDD. Okay, so this is one of the solution. So somehow if you can increase this gate voltage by the whatever the drop is there. Okay, so this VDD will be like, uh, VDD uh, 
plus VTH and that there is threshold, volt, uh, threshold voltage drop of the VTH. So this VTH and VTH will be canceled out and you will get the VDD complete swing here. So this is one of the solution. The, uh, but the, there is a problem of this kind of technique and other technique could also be there like uh, by changing the body biasing, by reducing the threshold voltage. So all these things will be explained later on when, when I will talk about the uh, uh, some other alternative circuits to improve the quality of any circuit. So yeah, just I explained you one of the technique. Okay. okay. So uh, any other questions? Yeah, this, this is in our scope, like what you asked the question, this is in our scope and that will be explained after five lectures. Okay, so I'm binding up the session here now uh, in case there is no doubt. See you tomorrow. Thank you so much.